Okay, so we can, let's look at the circuit that we're gonna we're gonna use. Today's circuit. We're gonna put this connected across this. So if you take a, a real-world voltmeter and connect it off across a real-world uh, cell, you'll get a reading off the meter, but it w it'll be influenced by the internal resistance of the of the meter, and also there'll be the internal resistance of the of the uh, cell. So the circuit. Here's the resistance, and here's this. I'm just going to connect those. I won't draw the boxes around them, but and and I'm going to draw the uh, resistance. Here's R sub V, and the voltmeter. So this together represents the voltmeter with the internal resistance of the voltmeter. Here's the internal resistance of the of the uh, cell, and here's the EMF of, of the cell, the internal EMF of that cell. So the first measurement you'll make will, uh, just when you connect this like, like so, will, oh, you know what we can do? To save the battery, I've added this. I forgot about this, but we, we do use this. We'll put a switch, because if you just keep this connected, uh, connected, it'll drain the already dead battery. So when you can, close the switch to make a measurement and open the switch. Now when you're changing the resistance later on, sometimes we keep it closed, but the general idea is close it to make a measurement and then open it so you don't drain the battery further. It's already dead. So we'll make this, uh, we'll use this circuit and the first measurement, oh, I don't want to write there. The first measurement this is the first measurement when you just connect. We'll call that V naught. Okay, zero for starting. Now, that's not enough to figure out both the internal resistance and the EMF of this. We need more data. And the way we do that is we'll put another resistance in parallel with the meter. There, and we'll call this RB for box. The, the resistance we'll use is in what's called a decade box. It is a variable resistor where you can turn the knob and dial in what resistance you want. It's 1% uh, precision, so it's better than most other resistors we use. And we'll connect it in parallel. Remember, this whole thing is the meter, so we'll just put it in connect, connect it in parallel with the meter across the cell. Now when you do this, we have the internal resistance of the voltmeter in parallel with the resistance of the decade box. So these two, you can see, are in parallel. So we'll call this R sub P. Now you probably remember from the lab after Ohm's lab, resistors in series and parallel, that, and P for parallel. Uh, the rule for resistors in parallel, one over the resultant resistance of both is one over one of them, the resistance of the box, plus one over the resistance of internal resistance of the voltmeter. If you solve this, and that's one of your tasks also, a derivation, you will get this is one of the equations in the handout, and you've got to do the algebra. It's not hard. Um, the, two, the product of the two divided by the sum of the two. So in the formula, we'll use RP for the parallel combination of both of these, and we have to calculate this. Now, we'll measure the voltage, okay? V1 is voltage measured with um, RB in place. So first you make a measurement without the, without the decade box, and you call that V0. And then you make successive measurements, more than one. You change the, the resistance on the decade box several times. 
and each time we'll call that V1. I guess we could call it V1, V2, V3, but the, the handout says V1 with the decade box. And now you'll see from the algebra in the, in the lab handout, we can solve, there's two equations and two unknowns, and, or there are more than two, there, yeah, there are two equations and two unknowns with V0 and V1. And so you can solve for R, the internal resistance, and you can solve for the EMF. And we'll get multiple values for those. If this model works, they should all be about the same, right? Because no matter what you change for RB, this should behave like a resistor. And so it, uh, uh, it should be about the same value for both of these two. If changing the decade box value changes R a lot, not just random variation, but there's a, there's a trend or there's a variation, or it changes the EMF a lot, this model doesn't work. Now, I also want to remind you, I've mentioned this before, Kirchhoff's loop rule. We're going to use that. It helps you in the derivations. So well, let me write it here first. Kirchhoff's loop rule. I'll say it first and I'll write it down for you, just like I do on the, on the whiteboard. Kirchhoff's loop rule is that the sum of the voltage rises and drops around a closed loop in a circuit will add up to zero. So, so the sum of all potential rises and drops around a closed loop. It has to be closed. So we can apply that to our circuit. Now, so I'll start at the cell. You can pick start anywhere, but I like to start at cells because it makes it a positive contribution and, and you just go in that direction and it sets the direction. So here's the circuit. I'll start at the, the cell I'll plus EMF. Now I'm going in the direction of the plus, and then current going through the resistor uh, is a voltage drop by Ohm's law. So we'll have a minus sign, and we'll have I R. I is the current coming out of the battery. I'm going to have it go over here. I'm going to treat both of these together as one resistor for our purposes. and. Uh, uh, and the voltmeter is infinite resistance, so we'll just go through these. So we'll have a drop, the same, and the reason is the same current goes through here. It splits through both, but it goes through the effective parallel resistor. So we'll get a voltage drop of, again, I times the R. Uh, they're in parallel, so it's the RP. And then when the switch is closed, we come back to the battery, so that's a closed loop, so it adds to zero. Okay. Now, then we can also... Um, you know, we, that that condition has to hold, and we can u then use that in a derivation or to, to derive some other some other result. So that's Kirchhoff's loop rule.